the whole tax question. Yeah, I guess I'd ask, question. How, how important is that to, to venture capital? Is it, any reflections on that? Bill or Wayne? Or <laughs> well, we, in, uh, in 2000, when Multnomah County and the city of Portland passed their ITAX uh, surcharges, we, at, we had to leave the county, not just under advice of, of our our tax council, but because we would have had to pass any taxes on to non-tax paying uh, investors in our fund. And I can tell you, since one of those was a multi-billion dollar Canadian pension fund, they would have said, you guys have, have fun paying those taxes for us because it's not part of the agreement. So that's why we left Multnomah County in 2000 and went <coughs> back. And now we have to sit down with our, our legal counsel following 66 and 67 and find out what the ramifications are for our current and future funds and whether we can remain in Oregon. Yeah, I, I have the same concern. I mean, the capital gains tax at this point has gotten to the point where it, it, it is a huge issue. Uh, the people I know that are angel investors, and you know, I think um, you know, we've cultivated and, and actually got uh, a pretty big group of angels across the state at this point. And boy, the ones I'm talking to are Somehow we've got to either reward people that are reinvesting in the economic uh, development of state in one way or another, or do something about the capital gains tax because it just you you feel like I mean you, you feel like you're, you're spinning your wheels and that's a very very unfortunate situation to be in. And I agree, you're not talking about multi billionaires here. You're talking to pe about people that absolutely are investing in. Oregon because they care about Oregon, but less and less they're feeling like that is appreciated, and I think that's a huge issue, uh, just really a huge issue that may not be getting out on the table, and I was glad you brought it up, because I think, had you not, I would have, <laughs> I think it's a big issue. I think with respect to the tax issue, there's probably two different threads. One is the absolute amount of the tax. There's no particular reason that Oregon ought to have the highest capital gains tax in the country and then claim it's entrepreneur friendly because you can't have entrepreneurs without them also investing. It's just, it's a non sequitur. But I think that uh, that's a, it, that's a what's the right marginal rate question and we're all willing to have proper discussions around that. I really think that what we did to ourselves over the last uh, year in terms of uh, the message that we sent to angel investors and to relatively high net worth individuals in terms of capital formation in this state was just a tragedy. And I, I, look, at, uh, I look at my friends who I can point to the stakes their angel investments put in the ground attracting millions, tens of millions of venture capital in this state that formed thousands of Oregon jobs and without them it would not have happened have left the state over the bruising nature of this fight. And from their perception, they went down and offered to help you know, people who needed money in Salem a year ago and got mugged. And they got mugged permanently. And it's not about the amount. They volunteered to pay the amount. It's about a sense that they were told that they not only didn't matter, but they got told in the course of this campaign we all ran to try to pass these things to make sure our schools stay funded and everything else, that they, the ones who were being asked to pay the tax, were greedy and they felt like they were being told it by people who weren't offering to contribute something. And they just got sick of it. They just felt like, I'm not appreciated here. This state doesn't care about me. And it's a political culture, culture that does not understand capital formation, that thinks money is evil, and they left. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not. I, I think that sometimes it can be true and others it isn't, you know. Progressives, Oregon's a great progressive state, sometimes like to have this sort of leftist rhetoric, but I think a lot of people are pretty thoughtful about this. I'm just saying we do damage to ourselves when we single out a group of people like that who, are, who have done so much for this state and essentially tell them, you're not valued, you're not wanted, we're gonna pick your pocket if you're here. Quite aside from the, from the rate, I think that the, the political culture and the public culture around the suspicion of, uh, of investing in wealth is a problem.
Yeah, just like one more comment and then we'll move on. I, I want to be a little bit concrete about this tax question. Um, we've been trying to map out this idea from going from the guy with an idea to the guy with a $100 million business. You figure out that, that I'm successful, I, I get a group of people, I nurse them through this process, and I'm successful, I actually get somebody to create a business that's $100 million. And, and then I ask the question of all the people around me, and I've been doing this for about six months, would you move to Washington for a million bucks? And the number of people that say no is very small. But if I succeed in getting them to grow this $100 million company, they're probably going to get around $10 million out of that process, and they'll lose a million dollars of that by staying in the state. So we, with our tax structure, pay successful entrepreneurs to leave. We have an active program to move our entrepreneurs who are success, successful somewhere else. And then they vacation, then they get bored, then they start a new company. Where do they start that new company? They start in a company where they're living, not where they might come back to. And so all of a sudden, they're in Washington starting companies and not here. And I can name people that have actually done this. This is a, a fictitious question. This is very specific people have done that rational analysis and have moved away because our state incentives incent them to go away. And our solution is to keep the bridge gridlocked. <laughs> That's another for another one. <laughs> <laughs> Next cluster that we I want to make sure we all have folks from the bank and get one straight from the bank one day. Yeah. 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 I mean, the question I would have is, is there a carrot and stick approach that can be taken? You know, the, the state government has uh, certainly articulated directions and programs that they feel are worthy of state investment in, can those same, uh, is, there, is there a deferment of capital gains that can be done for private investment into those same areas? So just putting that out there in terms of uh, you know, clean tech in particular, Betsy is a tool, um, what can be done on the private side to reduce the impact of some of the tax measures if they're aligned with sort of broader state goals? We actually tried that 20 years ago, yeah. and uh, the people who took advantage of it and then lost their money because the investment didn't work out were sent a tax bill for the amount that they invested in the lost companies on the theory that it was a deferment and not a forgiveness. That's sometimes we don't necessarily connect all the dots in these programs when it gets 